In part A, we are asked to determine the magnitude of the average EMF induced in the coil while it is rotating through a magnetic field. We know from Faraday's law of induction that the induced EMF is equal to the number of turns in the coil, which in this case is 28, multiplied by the change in magnetic flux divided by the change in time. The change in time actually is also given, so we have delta T, we have N. What we really need to discuss is the change in magnetic flux. Now we know that the magnetic flux is equal to the strength of the magnetic field times the area times the cosine of an angle. So we can begin to set up an expression for the initial magnetic flux. We can call this magnetic flux and then with a little subscript I for initial. And this is going to equal the magnetic field times the area times the cosine of the initial angle. It's worth discussing what this initial angle is. We can see from this picture that the magnetic field is pointing into the page. And we know that it's pointing into the page because of those green X's. Green X's or X's of any color always indicate the vector is pointing into the page. Now, there is an imaginary line that we call the normal line that is passing through the center of the square loop. We can symbolize that with another X. We'll change the color to indicate that this is not the magnetic field per se, but it is an imaginary line that passes through the center of the coil. It's actually known as the normal line. So in this picture, this red X symbolizes the normal line. Now you'll notice the normal line and the green magnetic field are pointing in the same direction. So that would mean that the angle between the two is zero degrees. To visualize this, we've drawn an alternative perspective over here where the individual is looking down on top of the square coil. The magnetic field in this case would be pointing straight down the screen and then the normal line again passes right through the center. So this is another perspective that hopefully shows you that the initial angle is zero degrees. So that will be our expression for the initial magnetic flux. We can actually go ahead and plug in the values because we have everything we need. Remember the magnetic field was 1.25 Tesla. And now the area will be the area of a square. So for a square, you just take one side and multiply it by the length of the other side. Here we have 2.8 centimeters. Just remember to convert that into meters. So you'll have 2.8 times 10 to the minus two meters. Notice again, we converted it into meters by multiplying by 10 to the negative two. And then you'll square that because to find the area of a square, you just square the side length basically. And then multiplied by the cosine of zero degrees. Let's pick up our calculators and punch this in. Notice the cosine of zero degrees is one. So it actually doesn't need to be punched in, but if you punch it in, make sure your calculator is set to degree mode and you end up with 9.8 times 10 to the minus four. And then the unit here of the magnetic flux is Tesla multiplied by meters squared. So this is our initial magnetic flux. But what we need, remember, is the change in the magnetic flux. So we still have to find the final flux. And we can do that by noting that the loop or the coil is rotated 90 degrees about the horizontal axis. So if we come back to this picture and imagine rotating the loop by 90 degrees, then the loop would be in this orientation. We would be looking at it edge on. The magnetic field, of course, is still pointing into the computer screen, but now the normal line, which passes through the center, is oriented in this fashion, like that. So the magnetic field is into the page, the normal line is passing through the center. Hopefully we can see that in this case, the angle between those two, between the magnetic field and the normal, will be 90 degrees. So we're going to come and set up another drawing to make sure that that makes sense. This is the other perspective looking down on the loop. When it's rotated by 90 degrees, now the loop will be oriented in this fashion. Magnetic field in this perspective still pointing down, but now that red normal line, which was over here, has been rotated 90 degrees. It's now pointing into the page. Again, the angle here is 90 degrees. So hopefully that provides some perspective. Now we can calculate the final magnetic flux. We'll put a little subscript F here. It's B, A, cosine of the final angle. We can take a bit of a shortcut here because again, the, uh, the angle is 90 degrees and it's worth remembering that the cosine of 90 degrees is actually equal to zero. So you're going to have B, A multiplied by zero, which of course gives us zero. 
So this is the final magnetic flux. It's zero Tesla meters squared. We are now ready to determine the induced EMF by using Faraday's law. So why don't we come down and rewrite it below. Now we can notice that we can rewrite the change in the magnetic flux in the following manner. A change in any quantity is the final value of the quantity minus the initial value of the quantity. So we're going to expand the change in magnetic flux in that fashion here. We can plug in all the knowns. We have negative n was the number of turns in this square coil. You remember that was 28. The final magnetic flux was 0 tesla meter squared. The initial was the 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4 tesla meter squared and then divided by the time interval during which this rotation was occurring. The time interval was 0.335 seconds. So we'll pick up our calculators, we will process this calculation, and when we do so, we get an induced EMF magnitude of roughly 0.0819 volts. And if your homework system requires this to be converted into millivolts, we simply have to remember that one millivolt is equivalent to 10 to the minus 3 volts. We multiply by this conversion factor, the volts will cancel out. So we're basically multiplying our answer by 1 over 10 to the negative 3. We end up with a final induced EMF value of 81.9 millivolts. So this would be the correct answer to part A. In part B, we were asked for the current, and we can recall that current is related to the EMF and resistance by Ohm's law. We recall that resistance was equal to a potential difference divided by a current. In this case, the potential difference is this induced EMF. So we can actually rewrite Ohm's law as R is equal to the induced EMF divided by the current. We'll solve the equation for current by multiplying both sides by I. So now we have IR equals induced EMF, and then we'll divide both sides by the resistance. So now the current is equal to the induced EMF divided by the resistance. We have the induced EMF. We also have the resistance. If we go back up and look at the question, the resistance is given as 0.78 ohms. Notice when you plug in the induced EMF, you can actually use the millivolt value. So we're going to use 81.9 millivolts. We'll see why that is in a moment. And then divide by the resistance of 0.78 ohms. The reason we can leave it in millivolts is then our answer comes out in milliamps rather than amps, which is what the homework system probably asks for. So we have 105 milliamps as the final and correct answer for part B.